Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thanks so much for joining us again. Going to be speaking with Dr. James Woody. He's CEO of 180 Life Sciences Corporation, and he's joining us to talk about some clinical programs using anti-TNF for Dupuytren's contracture. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Woody. Uh, thank you. Sure, I'm uh, very happy to talk about our uh, programs. Uh, the very first program that we're initiating is in Dupuytren's contracture. And uh, some of you may be aware of it. My wife actually has this. And uh, what happens is in the palm of your hand, a nodule forms, and it gradually pulls your finger together uh, in kind of a claw hand, and you can't type and do other things, and eventually you require surgery. So what we have is a special therapy to inject uh, as the uh, nodule initially forms uh, anti-TNF, and it will prevent, we hope, the, uh, the whole formation of the uh, disability and the contraction. We've already enrolled 180 patients in our trial, and uh, they're all ready for follow-up, and we'll uh, tell you what the answer is probably next year. What type of a growth uh, is this uh, Dupuytren's contracture? For, for whatever reason, in some people, uh, it begins as a kind of a nodule in the palm of your hand, and that nodule causes fibrosis to form, and the fibrosis then uh, extends to your fingers and pulls the, uh, pu- pulls the finger in to kind of a contracture is what happens. We know what's driving this, and we know that our anti-TNF uh, blocks the uh, formation of these contracting uh, fibrous tissues. Is this a condition that can basically overtake the part of the body that's, that is affecting? No, generally it's limited to the hand. And there's, you know, a fair number of patients with this, maybe 11 million in the U.S., same in the European Union. Uh, a lot of times uh, people think about it and their grandfather had this or their father or mother. Uh, so it's uh, in some cases familial, but uh, it's, it's limited pretty much to the hand. Is this something that is painful and does it become more painful over time if not treated? Uh, it's, it's more disabling than painful. Mm-hmm. Uh, and eventually, uh, like I said, you could, there are several therapies. Ours is the one that's the least in, invasive until you have to have actual surgery where they cut these uh, ligaments out. Mm-hmm. So uh, the pain is pretty, pretty modest. It's usually cared for by you. the usual things, Advil or Aleve or one of those. Now, you said these uh, clinical programs are using anti-TNF. What exactly is TNF and what is anti-TNF? Okay. uh, In your body, uh, circulating around are thousands of proteins. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some of them do good things. Uh, Some of them aren't so good. And one of the bad ones is called TNF, tumor necrosis factor. It was misnamed a long, long time ago because they were injecting these this particular protein into mice and it found they found it dissolved their cancers. Uh, so they called it tumor necrosis factor. What we found, uh, Dr. Feldman and I, is that this tumor necrosis factor drives fibrosis and inflammation and pain. And we were the first ones to develop a drug to treat patients with rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease, and psoriasis with an anti-TNF which blocks this substance and relieves all the uh, inflammation and pain. Now, is this a substance that um, we have all the time, or is it something that is generated as we get older? Uh, We we have a teeny bit all the time. Uh, When we have inflammatory conditions, like I said, rheumatoid arthritis or uh, Crohn's disease or psoriasis, uh, you make a lot more of it, and that's what causes the disease process. To continue. And there's now five or six of these anti-TNF uh, antibodies, biologics that you can get. All of them uh, seem to work pretty much the same way. We're using this in a very unique situation where we understand the fibrosis and dupatrins and uh, frozen shoulder I can talk about as well. Well, do that. Uh, I'd like to hear a lot about, uh, about the treatments that are being used in these trials. So the uh, second trial is in frozen shoulder, and this happens in uh, patients uh, more frequently if they have diabetes. Mm-hmm. Uh, often 50% of them have the Dupuytrens as well, but your shoulder becomes uh, very, very painful and immobile and eventually uh, becomes frozen with the fibrosis. In this condition, we're doing somewhat the same thing. We're injecting anti-TNF into the shoulder so that uh, the formation of the fibrous tissue 
is discontinued and we stop it from progressing to the very painful uh, uh, immobility. So we'll see how this goes and that trial's ready to go as well. Uh, and uh, hopefully when COVID resolves itself, we can, uh, can get on with it. Are these injections, do they go into the joints themselves or into the muscle or any place that uh, is affected? Yeah, these, these are very small injections. Uh, in, this, in the case of the hand, it's uh, injected into the nodule uh, where the fibrosis is starting. And into the shoulder, it's in the same, same uh, kind of space where the fibrosis is beginning to form. Uh, we've, we've got uh, very strong, uh, powerful anti-TNF antibodies so that we're injecting just a tiny amount so it's not uh, painful particularly. Is this significantly different than scar tissue that's deciding to do something on its own and has to be treated? I think the scar tissue is kind of the end of the process. After the fibrosis forms and gets organized, it kind of becomes a scar. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're hoping to prevent all that. I understand that 180 Life Sciences was founded uh, by yourself and uh, three others. Uh, could you tell us briefly about um, how that came to be? Uh, yes, it was started by uh, Dr. Mark Feldman, uh, who I worked with. He and I invented this drug called Remicade, uh, and Dr. Steinman, who uh, developed Tisabri, a drug for MS, mm -hmm. and uh, myself and Jonathan Rothbard, a fourth person, and a Dr. Michelin in Israel. So there were three original companies, uh, one in Israel, one in the uh, United Kingdom in Oxford, mm -hmm. and one here in uh, Palo Alto. And so we pulled all these three together to form one company, which we've named 180LS. Now, where can our listeners go and get some more information, much more information about these uh, trials that we've touched on briefly here tonight and about 180 Life Sciences uh, in general? We have a, a website, 180lifesciences.com. Uh, if they go on the, uh, on the, into the stock market, NASDAQ or the TD Ameritrade or whatever, they can put ATNF and, uh, then all of our uh, materials show up and our press releases and things like that. Well, I appreciate you coming in and speaking with us briefly. I know 10 minutes is not a lot of time and I'm hoping that we can, um, arrange another conversation in the future. That would be fine. Uh, interesting talking with you. Okay. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. James Whitty, CEO of 180 Life Sciences Corporation. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.